This is episode number 187, a special Christmas episode. Is there a war on Christmas? Absolutely. I'm declaring it. It's on this episode, and that starts now. This is the Red Podcast. How to take your idea and make a name for yourself within your industry and beyond. Spread your message. Attract a following. Rise above the noise. Here's your host, David Hooper. This is the Red Podcast, the podcast for influencers. If you're a blogger, podcaster, speaker, a marketer, nonfiction author, or entrepreneur, you're somebody with a message to spread. This is the podcast for you. I talk about book publishing, podcasting, speaking, and other marketing elements of your business that you must master to make a name for yourself. The focus, that's what it is. How to take your idea, make a name for yourself, and make money with that idea. Before I get into the episode today, I want to talk to you about Pro Coach Academy. If you're in the coaching business and you're finishing out a great year, you want to make sure the new year is even better, Pro Coach Academy may be for you. Here's what you'll learn. How to easily and consistently land new clients, easy and effective ways to reach more people and make a bigger difference in the world. The right approach to effortlessly sell your coaching services without feeling icky or salesy. And also, how to have the freedom and flexibility in your coaching business without sacrificing your income. It's a 12-week program. The new session starts January 12th. Find more information at ProCoachAcademy.com, ProCoachAcademy.com. We're in the middle of a holiday season. A couple of weeks ago, I went to a holiday performance. This was at a very classy venue in downtown Nashville where the Nashville Symphony performs. As a matter of fact, the Skirmerhorn Symphony Center. And as I was leaving, I thought that it was really interesting one, two, maybe even three people, three ushers who were working there, they all wished me a Merry Christmas. And I noticed this stuff because I'm a marketing guy. One, two, three people in a row, Merry Christmas. Didn't think anything of it, and here's the reason why I thought nothing of it. It was a Christmas show. It was billed as a Christmas show. There was a guy telling biblical stories from the stage. Christmas music was being performed by the stage. When you go to a Christmas show... That's what you expect. You expect to hear Merry Christmas. Now, let me segue into something else because this affects your business. I'm going to tell you a little story. This is about a small town in Tennessee, south of Nashville, maybe an hour. It's called Spring Hill, Tennessee. In the year 2000, there were 7,700 people living there. You probably never heard of Spring Hill. You may know one of their biggest exports, which was the Saturn car. They had a big Saturn factory there. A huge chunk of the population of Spring Hill, over a 1,000 people, worked in the Saturn plant. Because of that and other things, Spring Hill's grown. 2013, the population, 32,000. So from 7,700 to over 32,000 people in just 13 years. Big expansion. 89% of those people, white. These facts, not just random, they're important. I'm going to get to that in just a second because they're also important for your business. So this year, there's a small family-owned McDonald's in Spring Hill, Tennessee. They've got a window display. They've been doing windows for over 40 years. During the Christmas season, what I call the holiday season, they often have a Christmas theme. This year, they had a nativity scene. Not only did they have a nativity scene, with drawings of Mary, Jesus, lambs, three wise men. Look up Mac Nativity if you're interested in seeing a picture of this. They also said, his name is Jesus in one of the windows. Another window says, rejoice. A Michigan woman drove by this McDonald's, snapped a photo of it, uploaded the photo to Facebook. All of a sudden, this thing's going viral. This is a little bitty town, just a few years ago, 7,700 people. Right now, still small, 32,000 people. This McDonald's is everywhere on the internet. Fox News gets hold of it. It's all over Facebook. It's all over Twitter. It's all over the media networks, USA Today, CBS, CNN, and it's all over social media. This thing is everywhere. You had a small town McDonald's. Everybody's minding their own business. Nobody knows about this town, Spring Hill. But now it's a lightning rod. Now I want you to think about those two stories that I've just told you. One, 
It's a Christmas concert. You're going there for Christmas. You expect to hear a Christmas message when you're at a Christmas concert. If you're walking out of a Christmas concert and somebody wishes you Merry Christmas, you don't think anything of it. However, if you're on a highway and you drive past a McDonald's, you're hungry for a hamburger, and you see a nativity scene, even though it's around Christmas time, you might think something of it. So here are two big lessons from the stories that I just told you, especially the magnativity scene. And the first is you can't assume everybody thinks like you do. And this goes way beyond offending people. I think sometimes, especially in my area of the country, in the Bible Belt, people really do think there's a war on Christmas. Let me tell you another quick story. So a couple of years ago, I'm in an office building. They had just gotten a new receptionist. And I'm waiting in reception for my appointment. And I hear one of the women in reception ask, can we say Merry Christmas here? The other said this, I haven't heard that we can't. The first woman, she gets really excited. She said, good. They wouldn't let me do that, Walmart. It was happy holidays there. It's only happy holidays until Thanksgiving. And after that, it's Merry Christmas. By God, she was going to make sure that you knew that she was a Christian and it's Merry Christmas. Like I mentioned, I'm in Nashville. I'm in the buckle of the Bible Belt. We have huge signs along the highway. And they literally say, it's not Happy Holidays. It's Merry Christmas. One time I wished a guy Happy Holidays at the post office. He got pissed at me. He got mad. It's not Happy Holidays. It's Merry Christmas. So nothing about this issue surprises me. Every year there's talk about the war on Christmas. The discussion comes around and people everywhere get their panties in a wad over the smallest things such as school calling the break between semesters winter break instead of Christmas break. But when the war on Christmas comes around, I also think about an experience that I had with a very well-known Christian musician and producer. If I mentioned this guy's name, you would probably know who he is. If you don't know who he is, you absolutely have heard the music that he's produced because it's not just Christian music. So because of that, let me re-describe him. I know him as a Christian musician, a Christian producer, but he doesn't just produce Christian music. He's a regular guy who happens to be Christian. So knowing this about him, if he ever saw me out during the holiday season, if he ever wished me a Merry Christmas, wouldn't be surprised at all. And I actually did meet with him during the holiday season once. And why I specifically remember the interaction that I had with him, because he said this, he said, David, I hope you have a happy holiday and a great new year. I can still picture his enthusiasm. He wasn't pretentious. He wasn't trying to force his beliefs on me. But more importantly, he wasn't trying to assume anything. And I thought to myself, this is so refreshing. It wasn't like he was getting into a war about whether or not it was right to say Merry Christmas, whether or not it's right to say Happy Holidays. He understood this. He understood that people want to feel understood. And this is where you come in. Your customers, they want to feel understood. It wasn't that he was trying not to offend people. I'm not offended when somebody wishes me Merry Christmas. It happens. When you're in the buckle of the Bible belt, you're going to hear Merry Christmas. And it's not an offensive thing. It's people wanting to share something that's important to them with you. But this guy, very successful. Not a guy who just came out of Walmart and was trying to prove a point. He sold millions and millions of records. He wanted me to feel understood just like your customers want to feel understood. If you're at a Christmas show, if you're in a church, by all means, tell him Merry Christmas. But if you're elsewhere, you've got to realize that not everybody is like you. Even if you're in a church, even if you're at a Christmas show, not everybody is like you. For you to assume that is the kiss of death. Look, there are a lot of things about me that are not like you. I don't really talk about them unless it's in passing. For example, I've been vegetarian since 1997. At my house, I'm vegan. Now, I might mention that in passing, just like if you're Christian and you celebrate Christmas, you might mention that in passing. But I'm never going to make the assumption that you don't eat meat, that you don't eat animal products. It's a bad assumption to make. 
And if I get militant about it, it's going to turn you off. People want to feel understood. And that goes for people listening to this podcast, you and everybody else who's listening. And also people that are doing business with you, your customers. When you talk about McDonald's, the only thing that those people have in common is that they like hamburgers. That's it, that they want to eat at McDonald's. You can't assume that everybody is Christian. You can't assume that everybody is just like you. And that's not only in big cities, it's in little cities too, like Spring Hill, Tennessee. It's in the Spring Hill of 2000, when there were only 7,700 people there. It's in the Spring Hill of 2013, when the population's grown to 32,000 people. Even with a small population like that, even with a homogenous population like that, 89% people white, can't assume anything. So that's big lesson number one. You cannot assume that everybody thinks the way that you do, and that goes way beyond worrying about offending people. But here's lesson number two. This is an even bigger lesson. That your message, when you get into situations like this, where you're targeting just part of the population, that message is loaded. And do you really want to go there? So even in a small town, as I just mentioned, with homogenous audience, 89% white, just a few people there, 32,000 people, that was sort of a safe bet. It was sort of a safe bet. Certainly more safe than it would be within a cosmopolitan area, maybe Brooklyn, Chicago, even Nashville. A woman coming in from out of town, she doesn't even live there. She saw it. She takes a photo. Then the message goes everywhere. And here's where things get weird. The woman, she had a Christian-related charity. She starts using that as an example of attacks on Christians. Why aren't we seeing this elsewhere? Everybody should stand up for Jesus. They asked the owners about this. They said, no, we're just family-oriented. It's a small-town McDonald's. We've done this for 40 years. People look forward to it. It works within our community. So that family-oriented, community-oriented photo, that becomes part of somebody else's message, and you don't want to go there. You're dragged into a much bigger debate. If you look at this woman's Facebook photos, if you look at her videos that she puts out, I think it's propaganda, victim mindset, war on Christians. She's got her own agenda. She's a public speaker. And sometimes you don't even have to have a message to get sucked into this. Starbucks, we saw that this holiday season. All they did was have a red cup, a plain red cup. All of a sudden, that's dragged into a debate that you don't want to be part of. We all have our beliefs. As I mentioned, I'm vegetarian. But I don't need to put those beliefs out front and center when people are coming to me for something that has nothing to do with vegetarianism. If you're a religious person or you have a certain lifestyle that you prescribe to, you don't need to put it out there. There's nothing wrong with just sticking to business. And if you're looking to help more people, if you're looking to connect with more people, if you're looking for more people to be understood, sticking to business can be a very good thing. If you ever see one of those people, they've got a Rolex watch or a Gucci bag, and they have to let Everybody know, oh, yeah, I'm a Rolex. Hey, let me, uh, let me check what time it is on my Rolex watch. Let me reach into my Gucci bag and get my wallet. We've all seen people like that. But the people who are very confident in themselves, they don't need to let everybody know that they're wearing a Rolex watch. The people who need to know that you're wearing a Rolex watch, they know that you're wearing a Rolex watch because they can recognize it. The people who need to know that you're carrying around a Gucci handbag, know that it's Gucci. You don't have to announce it to them. If you're Christian, you don't have to tell people. Just act like a Christian, and they'll be able to recognize that. If you're vegetarian, when you go out to eat, just don't order meat, and if people are curious about it, they will ask you about it. That's it. Just do what you do, You handle your business and allow your customers to handle business in whatever way they want to. Unless you're running a church, unless you're running a vegan restaurant, there is absolutely no reason for you to take these issues and broadcast them. You broadcast them simply by living them. So let me recap these two big lessons for you. One, you cannot assume that everybody thinks like you do, and that goes way beyond trying to offend people. 
Just don't make assumptions that everybody thinks like you do. And two, if your message is loaded, somebody can hijack that message and you become part of a discussion that you don't want to be part of. You're the equivalent of that little family-owned restaurant minding your own business in your little bitty town of 30,000 people and all of a sudden you're getting national coverage. If you don't want that kind of coverage, don't go there. Hey, speaking of Christians, the next episode, Christian blogger Michael Hyatt, he's got something called the Life Score Assessment. I'm going to talk about it, review it on the next episode. If you're interested in making the next year great, you'll want to be part of this. And to make sure you don't miss that episode, go to redpodcast.com. You can subscribe via iTunes. You can subscribe via your Android phone. Any way you get podcasts, redpodcast.com makes it easy to subscribe. And speaking of making the upcoming year great, if you are a coach, if you're looking to get more clients, if you're looking to have more flexibility, more freedom in your coaching business, if you're looking to learn a better approach for effortlessly attracting people to your coaching services, Pro Coach Academy may be for you. It's a 12-week training. The next session is enrolling now. It starts January 12th. ProCoachAcademy.com has more information. ProCoachAcademy.com. Thank you so much for listening to Red Podcast. It's been a great year. I'm looking forward to an even bigger year. I've got a lot of great things when it comes to podcasting and book publishing that I'm going to be bringing to the table here. If you've got questions, you've got comments, reach out to me. At David Hooper on Twitter is my username. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Red Podcast. You've been listening to Red Podcast, the marketing podcast for influencers. Never miss an episode. Subscribe now with your iPhone, Android, or via RSS at redpodcast.com.